And client members, poker fans, and others who some fun this video. I'm Sarge Croxon, and today we're going to talk about episode 77 of Pokemon X and Y the English dub. And uh, today was the Sky Relay race, uh, which was actually pretty entertaining. Uh, though there were some things in there that I kind of was not, you know, okay with, or not happy with, or just confused. Uh, the fact that Ash didn't know what the fuck it was kind of irked me because. He has done these types of races before. Granted, he didn't have as many, like, it wasn't exactly the same, but it was still relatively, a, still a race in the sky, which he's done plenty of. So, kind of upset me that they kind of went with that, because that's not how it should go. I don't know. That's just me, though. Uh, but anyways, so uh, we meet this guy and this old man who is... At the place there, there he he wants to participate, but he can't because he only has one flying type and he needs th at least three. Which, ironically, that's what Ash has. He has you know, uh, Butchinger, Halucha, and Noibet. Now, Noibet still you know he's been practicing right because he he needs to get better at flying. Like he needs to he still needs to learn how to fly, which is still you know it's good. It's good that they they didn't just brush it off. I like the fact that they came back to it. Noibat's still struggling, uh, and so he's like, yeah, let's go, and then the old man's going to kind of explain how the race works. It's, it's kind of like, it's technically a circular thing, but of course there's stuff in the way, so you have to kind of adjust yourself depending on the terrain, and maybe wind currents that happen to show around, because there are like deep valleys and stuff like that. So it, it is tough in certain areas, but easier in some others, so... You have like your Pokemon has to be prepared at all times. The trainer rides on an air balloon that happens that flies about a, a little bit above, uh, but always behind the Pokemon, so that they can see not only ahead but you know around them to make sure that if something happens, they can be there and be like make quick decisions so the Pokemon can know what to do. Uh, and I was like, let's go. Now the reasoning behind the old man not being able to race is the fact that he didn't get three Pokemon. I, I would have preferred it because he's such a well, he was such an old man that he maybe participated in the past and just failed uh, on numerous occasions, and then at some point he ended up losing his flying types or something. I don't know, may anything like just I mean you're an old man, you never were able to capture three flying types. I mean Ash. Uh, has a total of what eight? No, nine. Cause he had Butterfree, Pidgeot, Noctowl, uh, Swallow, Staraptor, Unpheasant, and then the current three. So that's about nine. All right, that's fine. We're gonna do this. Uh, Ash chooses Fletchner for the first run because it's it's kind of like the first stretch. So, like, technically speaking, Fletchner is the fastest of the three. Let's just get him in the lead as quickly as possible to try to give the others some kind of, uh, of you know, way to work, not have to worry as much. Halucha gets the second area because it's the toughest. And as as great as Fletchner is at maneuverability, we already have him in the front. Noibat can't handle anything too crazy yet, so uh, Halucha is obviously second. Uh, and then Noibat gets to be uh, at the very end, which is literally just a stretch. It's just a final stretch. Now, granted, there is certain areas because there is kind of like a valley that goes down that sometimes brings in wind currents unexpectedly. So, of course, that might be the only tough challenge of this. Uh, so, Noibat has to be prepared, obviously. Which is bad. It's good and bad because it's technically training for Noibat to, you know, continually get better at flying. Uh, while also, you know, having a race and, you know, being able to kind of learn as he goes, which is cool. I like the fact that they did this. So we get to see who our, I guess, rival for the race is going to be. Is, a dude, is this dude who has a Starly, Star Ab Starly Staravia and a Star After. I don't know why he has all three when he just should have three Star Afters, but, you know, I'm not going to judge. Uh, the dude won last year, so he's trying to go for a back-to-back. -back. Fine. 
Team Rocket ends up joining the fray, and I was like, okay, um, that's random. They only have two Pokemon that can technically, what, float? Like, they don't have flying types. They have two Pokemon that just happen to be able to float, uh, being Pumpkaboo and Inke. But they're like, we need, we just need to go ahead. Now, they're Team Rocket, so of course they have to come up with them stupid plan. Um, and, uh, so the race starts. Cool. Uh, we have in the lead, Fletzner, like I said, the dude, uh, the one time one last year has Staravia. Team Rocket sent out. Or we don't even get to see Team Rocket Pokemon until later in the in the stretch. So they go in. Fletchinger, I right off the gate, just balling, just straight up, boom! I'm in the lead, bitches, to eat my tail feathers. And like Fletchinger was straight up going in, like crazy. There was this dude with a high Dragon. I was like, what the fuck? But they're going in, like, the race is pretty, you know, it's pretty, you know, just straightforward at the beginning. But then, it has to come into some trees. Now, the trees, well, it's actually a forest. They have to be able to maneuver around the, the trees and, you know, make sure that they can get around certain areas. And because it's so dense, you always have to be making sure you're looking forward so nothing happens and you don't crash. Hydrangon didn't get the memo because he was just breaking and just crashing through everything. You just saw trees just being busted down and falling down and he ended up crashing into this big ass oak tree which then caused like a bunch of fruits and apples to just start falling down and uh well the Pokemon not only have to worry about the trees but they have to worry about the big ass tree dropping shit all over the place and since it's such an enclosed area they kind of have to really be able to maneuver out of everything now that just means like this makes the race unpredictable which means that all the stuff the old man said makes no freaking sense anymore because this is supposed to be just the first stretch and you just have to be able to get to the end. Uh, I mean, granted, it is since it is the sky and the sky can be very unpredictable and Mother Nature can do a lot of things. You should be prepared for the most crazy shit. But I'm just saying, this was not nature. This was a fucking Hydrangea who was too stupid and reckless to do, you know, move around everything. Besides the point. Now, Staravia gets told to like slow down so that you'll be able to move out maneuver the stuff. Uh, the, this dude has his Altera just run through it, uh, and then Fletcher just kind of like tries to basically keep up at this point uh, because he was in the lead, so he technically got the worst of it. I mean, he didn't get hit, but the fact that he was in the lead, he had everything just started going around him, so he had to like. Out maneuver, which meant he had to kind of slow down, but at the same time, like move all over the place. They get out the forest. Altera's in the front, behind him, Staravia, and then uh, Fletchner. Fletchner is still going in, and then out of fucking nowhere, Pumpkaboo comes out of of uh, uh, Altaria. I was just like, what the fuck? Like I was wondering where one of the Pokemon was. And Punk Altaria for some reason falls off to that. Like I don't understand. Uh, I guess it just freaked out at the fact that there was a Punkaboo inside it. Like how do you not feel that? That's your fucking wing. I know it's made out of freaking clouds and shit, but it's still your motherfucking wing. You should be able to feel something touching your wings, man. I'm just saying. But anyways, Punkaboo passes off to a robotic mechanical Pelipper. That has Meowth inside. And he's like, let's go. And so, you know, he goes off. Staravia passes off to Star After. And then Fletcher passes off to Halucha. And you know, Clement's like, go. Because uh, he's the one. Clement and Bonnie are with Halucha. He gets passed off. And then he jumps off. And uh, Fletcher is like, tired as fuck. Like, this man was just straight up gangster. Like, cause he's the first, so he has to like try to get the lead. So usually, when you're the first, like it's usually the first leg, and then the one at the end, they have to work the hardest uh, to make sure that this one takes the lead and the last one keeps the lead. That's kind of how it works. The one in the middle usually gets the most like just relaxing time, but not in this case. Hold you have to work his ass off. This is what happens. This place is full of just boulders and rocks everywhere. You literally have to be able to outmaneuver everything because they're so, like, random as fuck. And they're all over the place. So you don't have to, like, be moving, you know, swinging left and right and shit. 
Uh, now, Meowth Pelipper is in the front. Staraptor is right behind him. And then Ash finally remembers, hey, this is fucking Halucha. Use the fucking rocks. And so he uses the rocks to give himself boost because, you know, considering he has strong legs and the fact that he's part biting type means that he's able to push himself forward using the rock. So he sees a rock, kind of goes on it, pushes himself forward, and he passes Star after with flying colors. And this was beautiful. The way he just went. Like, this is a Pokemon that can't really fly. It's more like, he's, te I mean, he, he's technically gliding if you're willing to go into, to like, technical terms. And he just went, like, he, he used those rocks to advantage. No other Pokemon in the race could do that. Like, I'm being serious. He's the only one in that entire race that had any chance of being able to use the rocks in that manner. Because most flying types have their legs really close to their body. They can't just do that. Plus the fact that they really like need to use their wings. Halucha, he just needs to push him because technically his wings are an extension of him. Uh, well, I mean, technically wings are always an extension of a Pokemon or, or any animal, bird. But like in this case, like it really like Halucha doesn't really need to use his wings for anything. Uh, it's just like a bonus. Uh, so he was able to get ahead, and then it was him and Meowth Pelipper Man. And this dude just starts ramming into Hollow I'm like, bruh! Like, there's rocks everywhere. Do we really need you to do some shit right now? Because then they were like, you know, we should probably win this. Just look at it. Anyways, Hollow ends up dodging and then Meowth crashes into the rocks. So, like, Hollow did the whole, like, wall crawl and then, like, jump forward, and, which caused Meowth to crash into the rock. And thus, the Pelipper thing. It kind of exploded and then ran into Team Rocket and then they went flying. Uh, and I was just like, wait a minute, Wobbuffet and NK are still at the at the, the last place. Let's show off what happened. It was completely stupid and just oh god, because they went that way, but the races are that way. They somehow were able to like turn around and hit them and send them flying. And then I was just like, what the fuck? And then Serena was there waiting with Noibat. Halucha gets there, he gets there first, obviously, because he's just chilling, takes it, gives it to Noibat, Noibat, let's go, and then Star after to Starly, which is the most random, I mean, maybe, like I said, maybe it's because it's the easiest part of the race that they, you know, you don't need, like, the crazy, you know, the crazy Pokemon to pull it off, uh, Noibat goes, yo, uh, and then, I just want to ask, because when Fletcher got taken in by Clement and Bonnie, they went to the starting line. Why the big fuck did Serena get to ride in the balloon with Ash? There was no reason for that. At all. And that actually pissed me off the most. Like, why of all of them did she have the opportunity to ride in the balloon with Ash? There was, like, literally, there was nothing. Nothing happened either. That was just pointless as fuck. So if you're going to be like, oh, a more should be. No, 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 no. That was, there was really no purpose in, of any of that. At all. Anywhere. At least Halucha got to ride along. That's all I'm going to say. Anyway, no bad time. You know, no bad just chilling. Of course, Starly can actually fly. So, he ended up, you know, being, like, he ended up being a close race. And then a huge gust of wind came in from the bottom of the valley. Like I said, that, that was my, that's why I kept repeating it. Noibat ended up messing up and almost fell down all the way to the ground. Starly folded its wings and dove right in, so he was fine. And Norbat was about to just crash, which, of course, would have been bad. Uh, and then Norbat kind of remembers what happened in the training from earlier. Um, Halucha, you know, teaching it, Flexner teaching it. And then, like, snapped out of it because Ash believes in him. And then turned around, used the wind to rise. Like, he literally used the wind to rise back up. And then slowly go down, or, or not, not slowly, but like with full control, start like using the wind and riding in like a wave, which is kind of what he needs to keep practicing. And then he's able to like catch up to Starly, and so they're like neck and neck. Now normally when Ash does these types of races, he wins because of the neck and neck race, or the, between because of the neck and neck near the finish line. This time, however, they decided to throw a twist in there and said that. He didn't win, but it was really close. And I prefer it that way because honestly, if he had won, I would have just been like, 
Well, I don't know why I was worried this whole time. I mean, of course, let the Pokemon that can't fly win. You know? But, I mean, he did well. And I like the fact that Noibat was able to be pushed so far. And the fact that they were all like, yeah, you did it. And they were, I'm honestly, I preferred it that way. I really do because that gives Noibat more incentive to keep practicing, to keep getting better and faster and stronger, be able to use his wings better, be able to, you know, be able to use the wind to its advantage. So this was perfect training for him, and I really, really appreciate the fact that they made him lose because that just gives him, like, you know, it just needed to give him the boost that, hey, you can do this, let's keep practicing, let's keep doing this, which is awesome. So now I get second place, which is fine, I have no problem with it. Uh, and then when we do the, you know, everybody's all happy, excited, they're all congratulating him, Noibad is crying, well, I mean, he's not really crying, but he's not happy that they all are happy that, you know, he did so great, uh, because he's a baby, babies tend to be more appreciative if you tell them they did a great job, even if they didn't win, uh, but anyway, so this, the award ceremonies was kind of random, because, you know, only first place got a trophy when ten. Like, they had those stands where they do, like, the third, second, and first place, but only first place got a trophy. That's not how shit works, buddies, okay? You give a trophy to first, second, and third place. You don't just give it to first, because then who the fuck wants to do anything? Like, why would you even stand there if you're not getting anything? They didn't even get a medal. Like, this is a... Come on! I'm just saying. But anyways, guys, that's going to be it for this review. Thank you guys so much for watching. Link in the description where you can go watch the episodes if you miss them, uh, because it was early in the morning, or at least where, where I live. Anyways, that's it. Okay, I'm Forrest Croxon. I'll see you guys in future videos.